Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be whizzing through a hundred sustainable swaps or ideas for the festive season. Whether you're celebrating Christmas, Hanukkah, Yule or many other holidays, I hope that in this video I can help you be just a little bit more sustainable while you are celebrating. Now if you're new here and you like things all sustainable, low impact and cozy, then hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another video, especially as we've got another video coming on Sunday, which is a DIY holiday gift guide. And believe me, you won't want to miss that. As always, take what is applicable for you and simply leave the rest. Okay, grab a cup of tea, mulled wine, hot chocolate, whatever you're drinking, and let's get straight into the video. We love a Christmas sweater, but this year opt for a secondhand one or dig out last year's and rewear. We love an outfit repeater. You could also do a Christmas sweater swap with your friends or family to keep it interesting and wear something new to you this year. Similarly, with festive themed accessories like hats, etc. These can usually be bought secondhand or pulled out from last year. No one needs another new Santa hat. Have a go at making your own wreath. Collect foliage and personalize to your taste. If DIYing a wreath isn't really your thing, then why not support a local maker? They're much more likely to use foliage and biodegradable materials and you're supporting local. If you'd like to get a Christmas tree, try and purchase one from a responsibly managed forest company. I know some of you may think that fake trees are terrible, but if you reuse them every year, then they could be a really good option too. They're also much cheaper, so for many they could be your only option, so just try and reuse them as many times as possible. What could be more sustainable than that? Or like some of my friends do, simply decorate a pot plant you already have. They usually opt for a holiday cactus. More and more places like garden centres and nurseries allow you to rent a Christmas tree over the festive season. Just make sure it's grown sustainably by looking for either the FSC or Soil Association logo. If you're buying a tree, please remember to recycle it. Lots of councils in the UK will have a specific place allocated that you can drop it off and it will be recycled properly. Instead of buying new decorations, why not pull out last year's and decorate with those? Remember, when you're finished with them, to wrap them up safely so that you're able to reuse them again and again and again. Want to go out a little bit more? Try DIYing some of your decorations using foliage or coloured paper. This is a great activity to do with kids as well. You can also use things like fruit. Try drying out some orange slices and hanging them up. I really love vintage decorations too. And these are a really great sustainable swap as they are second hand. You can also opt for wooden decorations from a second hand shop or sustainably sourced. These should last you a lifetime. Or you could buy some recycled baubles from somewhere like Protect the Planet. So many options. My family now does Secret Santa because it's more economical and it means we can get one person a much nicer present that they actually want. Buying loads of gifts can be really stressful economically but also mentally if you have no idea what they would like. Secret Santa is a great option for cutting down excess waste on packaging, wrapping and unwanted gifts. Switch to LED Christmas tree lights. If every UK household swapped a string of incandescent lights for its LED equivalent, we could save more than 11 million pounds and 29,000 tonnes of CO2 just over the 12 days of Christmas. We also make everyone write a list of the things that they would like within a set budget, so we know we're not going to get something that will go unloved. If your household likes to have additional lights outside, why not switch to solar powered and put on a timer? If of course you can afford to do so. You'll not only make environmental savings, but your energy bills will be reduced too. As always though, using what you already have is the best thing you can do to reduce waste. But if you're looking for an upgrade, then this is a great thing to do. Kids presents. Depending on how old they are, getting them a secondhand bike or playset, etc. is great for little ones as they'll grow out of them quickly. So it doesn't really make sense to get them something new. They also literally won't care or even understand that their gift is secondhand, obviously depending on age. My mum bought my brother's son a secondhand bouncy thing and he bloody loves it and it literally costs five pounds. Best purchase ever. You can also DIY a present if of course you have the time. My mum once made me a doll's house and it was the best present I ever received. I still have it and hope to pass it on to some little ones in our family. Homemade DIY edible presents are always a winner and a great way to get something that is consumable. I have a whole DIY holiday gift guide coming this week, so make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. And go ahead and give this video a like if you are liking it. Try making your own gingerbread or holiday cookies this year. It's surprisingly fun to ice stars and other shaped cookies, and it can often be cheaper and yield many more. 
But this year has been particularly tough, so please remember that the holidays may be your only time off, and if you don't want to bloody bake cookies, you really don't have to. Ditch the crackers this year or opt for a more sustainable option or even give DIYing them a go. Give the gift of experiences rather than an actual item. These memories last a lifetime. Or focus on a meal that brings your household together and ditch the presents altogether. Donate. Crisis at Christmas is a great place to donate to if you're comfortable this holiday season and have the ability to help someone less fortunate than you. I'm doing a sponsored 75 kilometer walk in 24 hours to raise money for them this year, so if you would like to help out, the link will be in the description. Every charity has seen a huge decrease in funds this year, so anyone close to your heart or the person you're gifting to will very much appreciate it. Collect pine cones to decorate your home with. I love these things so much and they really last. I guess it gives a little of the same feeling of having a plant in your home. It feels really nice to bring a little of the outside into your home. Use materials to wrap your presents in, like a vintage scarf, fabric, or reusable paper. Reuse gift bags and boxes from last year. Don't have any? Why not try newspaper? Or actually, maybe this year it'd be better to use a magazine. You can also wrap in brown paper, string, and decorate with some degradable materials like dried fruit or flowers. Try to use recycled paper where possible and go for sheets rather than rolls to avoid excess plastic packaging if available to you. Make your own homemade mulled wine with cheap bread wine and mulling spices. Because you're adding sugar and spices, then it really doesn't matter the quality of the wine at all. Obviously, if you can afford to do so, organic wine is gonna be better, but just literally go with whatever you want. What else will you be drinking? Why not try some organic wine or some gin made in the UK, brandy or whiskey too? I'll leave a link to a few options in the description. You can also have a go at making your own hot chocolate or support a local independent company. Why not try, hear me out, a plant-based cheese board this year? The RT Vegan and Kinda Co both ship nationally and hand make everything themselves. They're tiny companies, so you're directly supporting the people behind the cheese. Are you a holiday candle lover? Why not try soy made candles, or ones that come in reusable containers, made locally or independently? Buying gifts for people who bloody love the planet is hard, so you could opt for something like a bee saver kit offered by charities like Friends of the Earth. A low key activity to do are winter walks in your local area. I love the app All Trails because it suggests tons and tons of trails or walks near you. Or, of course, Woodlands Trust or Rambler's website. This activity is free and is of course not wasteful at all. Games, games, games. If your family is anything like mine, then games are something we love to partake in. Either download the app like Heads Up on your phone or buying secondhand games or digging out old ones from your collection is a great way to keep people entertained without spending lots of money or buying new things. On the same note, puzzles are a great activity to keep yourself occupied. I did many puzzles over the first lockdown to keep my brain engaged and as something to do and it ended up becoming a thing family members occasionally sat down and helped me with. We did some puzzle swaps with friends and people in our building as well as buying a few secondhand from eBay. This year could be a good year to try out a nut roast instead of the traditional meat dishes. You could even just swap a few of the meat dishes out for a veggie alternative. Remember any step is amazing. You don't have to go completely plant based to have an impact especially as it's not accessible to everyone. Food waste can be pretty bad at this time of year, so if possible, opt for food that is grown locally or loose. Obviously, this isn't possible for everyone, so try to find foods that have minimal packaging or come in packaging that can be recycled properly or reused in some way. Don't buy foods that are traditional for whatever holiday you're celebrating if no one actually likes them. They will inevitably go to waste when the novelty wears off. Or do you know what? Just do your best. Finding a balance between enjoying yourself and stressing out over a little extra packaging is not what we want. Plan out what you're going to be eating on your celebration day and the days before and after. Planning is always a great way to reduce food waste and prevent you from buying too much. Buy your festive treats like chocolates in cardboard boxes or metal tins that can be reused. If you have the time and resources, making some of your dishes, or all of them if you can, from scratch is often more economical and can be made and frozen in advance. This could save you packaging, money and time on the day. Don't peel your veg and save on a little extra food waste by keeping the nutritious skin on. Take care of your leftovers, they're the best part. Just make sure you store them correctly so they can be enjoyed for days after. If there's too much, then make use of your freezer if you have one, or you can also donate food too, especially if you bought a few too many packets of chestnuts. 
1.5 billion Christmas cards are thrown away by UK households each year according to Imperial College researchers. Why not exchange your card for a call instead? This is more personal, can help bring people a little closer during this strange festive season. Not really a cool person? Why not an email? You can write a longer message and let the person know how you feel and that you're thinking about them this time of year. Okay, okay, okay. But cards can actually be really thoughtful and nice to receive, especially this year. You're gonna hear me say that a lot in this video. So why not try DIYing some? You can make some watercolor cards, collect dry leaves and stick them to the front or add some dried lavender or other nice smelling flowers. I'm thinking of making a video all about this. So if you wanna see that, give this video a thumbs up. DIY not your thing? Well, you could always choose a select few people you wanna send cards to and support an artist on Etsy to make the cards for you. Or lastly, you can always buy plantable cards, which is super fun, or ones that directly donate money to charity. We love some edible holiday decorations. You could hang some cookies you make or other delicious things that you know will get consumed. Advent calendars have the potential to be quite wasteful, so why not DIY your own and add in healthier options, if you want to, into each pocket? You could also put in little notes instead of chocolate. How about a wooden advent calendar? They are sustainable, can be reused every year, and are quite beautiful to behold. There's always the option to not have an advent calendar too, especially if you don't even celebrate Christmas. I can't remember the last time I had one, but maybe this year I'll DIY my own. Have you ever heard of a reverse advent calendar? This is also a possibility. This is where you buy a tin or packaged food each day and add it to a box. Then you donate it to your local food bank. Just make sure to find out what they actually need ahead of time. If your family goes for stockings, try and reuse the same one every single year. We have had ours since we were children, so they're over 20 years old. We no longer use ours for us, but we do try and use them for the kiddies in our family and we keep passing them down. Don't go overboard on the holiday candy if you're not that big of a sweet tooth. This usually ends in boxes and boxes of chocolate sitting in your cupboards for months after the holidays. I mean, not in my house, but you know, if you're not really a chocolate person. Are you someone who loves to dress up a little for your celebration day? Well, why not try renting an outfit or supporting a small ethical business this year? You can also do a clothes swap with friends before the holidays start, or if you have siblings, why not swap with them too? Not enough party glasses? Why not rent some for the day instead of buying more new or single use ones? You could also purchase some secondhand ones from online or a secondhand shop if they're open where you are. Just make sure to give them a good cleaning. The same can be done for cutlery and plates if you're catering for more people than usual. Renting is always a great option or borrowing from neighbors. Install a smart meter or have your heating on a timer. This time of year can really rack up your heating bill. So using these tips can be a great way to save on your energy bill. I feel like every year socks end up in my present. And if this likely happens to you or you're a sock buyer, then I would highly suggest shopping for socks that make a difference. Gift presents that help the receiver on their sustainability journey. For people who have periods, for example, reusable underwear is a really great purchase, especially if they are teens or have just started their period. I have a $10 discount in the description if you are interested in trying out Thinks, and you can also use the link for Speaks for those with bladder leakage issues too. The festive season can be quite pricey, so there's no harm in asking people to bring a dish, especially if you have different dietary requirements. This definitely helps with food waste as everyone is catered for without guessing and can help you save a little bit of money. We never seem to have enough chairs when we manage to get everyone together. So just like with cutlery and glasses, why not rent some chairs or an extra table for the kids? Secondhand designer bags. They may not be my thing, but I know a lot of people who love them. These are great gifts for your fancy friends or relatives who love a designer item, but not the price tag or environmental cost. There are tons of independent sellers nowadays who sell secondhand designer bags that are almost always in perfect condition. Secondhand or refurbished phones can also be a great swap. We're used to being pushed an upgrade every single year, but refurbished phones are great too, much cheaper and already in circulation. If they're needed, then this is a great alternative to buying new. If you do end up getting a new phone this holiday season, then please donate your old phones or at least sell them on so they're not getting wasted and sitting in your cupboard for another year. The desire to declutter after the festive season will probably be high. Please consider responsibly decluttering. Donate or sell things, recycle stuff properly, offer to friends or family rather than simply binning stuff that you no longer want. Okay, back to stockings. Now we talked about reusing last year's one, but what to fill it with? 
I find consumables to be one of the better items to fill them with. Handmade local soap or a shampoo bar, sustainable skincare, or even just a thoughtful letter. If you're looking for some fancy chocolate to add to the stocking, I always suggest Tony Chocoloni because it is slave free chocolate and comes in many different sizes and flavors for vegans and non-vegans. Kids stockings can be slightly harder, but if you create a norm that they will receive only a few stocking items, then they will learn to value quality over quantity. I certainly did growing up. This year, we'll undoubtedly be buying a lot of our presents online, which is totally fine and understandable. Just please recycle the delivery boxes responsibly or reuse them to package the gifts instead. Many people won't be able to travel over the festive period, so you'll already be cutting your footprint quite dramatically. But I just want to add that if you do have to travel to see loved ones or come home from university and it isn't against restrictions, then don't feel bad. If you are traveling by car, and again, it isn't against restrictions, you could try car sharing. I know the rules are different everywhere and hopefully by our celebration days, the lockdown here will have eased. So if possible, that's great. But again, try not to worry too much. Have a family Zoom call with those who couldn't be with you on the day. My boyfriend and I will be having a call when he wakes up and open each other's presents together. I also have a cousin in Japan who we're hoping to Zoom as well as her mum who won't be able to join us either. Facebook Marketplace is your best friend. It's excellent if you want to buy some secondhand furniture as a gift for someone else or if you're trying to create a nicer space for yourself now that you're most likely working from home. I know we've already spoken about cards, but I think we should also mention thank you cards. I have never seen the point of thank you cards. I always ring up or message the person after I've used the present to thank them again for it and let them know how much I loved using it. But if you love a thank you card, then opt for a smaller size and repeat the tips from before. Gift living things too. Plants are wonderful for those with green thumbs, especially as we're spending more and more time at home and indoors, buying something for someone that helps them enjoy their space a little more can make such a huge impact to their day-to-day -day emotions. I am always gonna recommend books as a great present because learning and self-care are amazing for our sustainability journeys. Remember that you need to take care of yourselves first before you can go on to change the world. I love self-help books like Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg and Grit by Angela Duckworth because they show us how to use psychology to build better habits and therefore be more successful in our sustainability journeys. If you're thinking about bedding for guests or for a gift, then hemp or fair trade cotton are really good alternative materials that are just a little bit more sustainable. Hemp is such an excellent material for reducing overall impact and resources. Oh, and as well as tensile as well. Look, I get it, kids are cute, and if like me you're an auntie or new parent, then you want to buy your kids some new stuff. So I've linked Shell Bizzle's awesome 2019 blog post for sustainable kids toys in the description. A DIY and budget-friendly option for decorations or gifts is to make some homemade clay pots and propagate some of your own plants. The pots are surprisingly easy to make. Another idea for gift wrapping is to sew together some reusable bags from scrap materials or clothes you no longer wear but can't really donate. My mum also used to knit little socks and stash some gifts inside. They are so cute. Gift cards are really underrated and actually amazing and could be such a great option for this year considering the state of the world. Yes, it's a card and a plastic gift card, but you're buying someone an opportunity to do something and enjoy themselves. For a friend's wedding recently, I couldn't be there because of the pandemic, so I gave her a gift card to her favorite supermarket. It may seem so basic, but gifting someone a card to buy boring things can actually be so nourishing for that person, especially if they're having a tough time financially or taking care of themselves this year. Put yourself first and take care to make sure your basic needs are being met before embarking on a sustainable swap that may stretch you too thin. If you take care of yourself first, the rest will take care of itself. I really believe that. Happy holiday friends. I hope you guys are able to spend some time with friends or family. And if you're not, I hope you're able to have lots of wonderful Zoom calls and meetings over the internet like that. You're all wonderful. And I hope you do take some downtime to rest and recuperate and look after yourselves. I look forward to seeing you guys on Sunday for that holiday gift guide. So make sure you are subscribed and give the video a like if you do like it. And just remember, you know, this year is a tough year, so if sustainability is at the back of your mind, then just try one or two things. Just do your best and try and look after yourselves. Okay, enough from me. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.